Thank you for joining us today for this segment of Tuesday Talks with the Maestro. I'm Ken Andrews, founder, music director, and conductor for the Orchestra of Northern New York. And I'm joined today with my very special guest, Julianne Kirk Doyle. Julianne is a principal clarinet with the Orchestra of Northern New York, professor of clarinet at the Crane School of Music. She's a member of the Aria Reed Trio and principal clarinet for the Northern Symphonic Winds. And I would urge you to go to our website, ani.org, and look at her full bio, you'll see that she's just done some amazing things. And so I am thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about the orchestra a little bit, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your background. Um, was clarinet the first instrument that you started? Yes, technically. Um, when I was really little, I'd watch my dad play the saxophone in his big band. And I really wanted to play like dad. So. He let me borrow his soprano saxophone. It was one of those little curved ones. And there's some pictures, I think, of me sitting and playing his curved soprano. Uh, but I was probably in third grade and just kind of figuring it out. Probably sounded terrible. Um, when I was in sixth grade, then I began um, playing both viola and clarinet at the same time. Um, and viola I, and clarinet? Viola and clarinet. I took the viola up. I was really serious about dance when I was young. And I didn't want to be in gym class and get injured, so I couldn't go to dance class. So I took up the viola to get out of gym class. That's, that's great. We had a viola, and so that was the instrument we chose. And so. isn't that interesting when we look at the history of viola and clarinet mm -hmm. with Brahms and other composers who have either written sonatas that could be interchanged or had in their mind the idea of the viola sound being similar to the clarinet sound. How interesting. And tell us, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma which if you look at the state of Oklahoma, Tulsa's about here. Um, and it's got a really rich arts community, actually. Very, very um, ballet company, opera company, orchestra, all sorts of theater. And there's been a downtown revitalization recently of the arts community and visual art. And so it, it was a really wonderful place to grow up. I went to Magnet Middle School and High School, where music and arts were, were very, very much emphasized. But also, it was a, a really diverse population of people we got to interact with. So it was an That's exciting fair. time. At what point during that time did you finally decide that you really wanted to pursue music? Well, I was, I was a sophomore in high school. And um, I was in the Allstate Orchestra on viola. And I hear we were playing Dvorak Convert Overture. And there's this beautiful clarinet line. And I, in the rehearsal, just nearly froze, turned, and looked at the clarinetist. And I thought, that's what I want to do. I want to play the clarinet. And I was playing the clarinet at the time, but that really solidified my decision. And so I got a little more serious. I was only taking viola lessons at the time picked up clarinet lessons, and by my senior year then, I made it into the orchestra at Allstate. So. Incredible. But that was Incredible. it, and, I, and from that moment on, it was music, that's it. Yeah. That's such a great thing to have a background in strings and winds, because they both help each other. Yes. They help our mind as we, as we look at those. That's, that's incredible. You know, Julianne, as, as principal in the um, Orchestra of Northern New York, and I've asked some of our other principals this as well. I, I love hearing the, what the different views are in this. Uh, each position has a really special role, you know, whether it's principal or second or uh, third or bass clarinet, E flat clarinet. What do you see in these roles, and how do you view them, and what their what their job is as in that position? I think everyone's role is to listen and listen to each other and match, being sure that we're working as a team together. And you know, the the principal, I would say, oboe, flute, clarinet, and bassoon, we all work together to then lead the rest of the woodwinds, but then to also be aware that we're matching the strings, we're matching the brass, and that the listening component, and then if we aren't sure of something, raising a question to you. You know, that, that are, we, are we together? Are we articulating this properly? Are we beginning these notes correctly? You know, that, that we're always listening and matching. And that, that, I think, is one of the most important parts of what we do. Well, I, I have to say to you that I, and to our listeners, that I really have always been amazed, not only of your, your wonderful ears and how you listen to the others, but how you blend. And that thought of matching the sound with flute or bassoon or oboe and creating that sound. I'm just curious, how do you feel that your work with the Aria Reed Trio, which if any of you have not heard the Aria Reed Trio, you really should. It's a fantastic, fantastic chamber ensemble. But I'm curious, how do you find that that work with oboe, clarinet, and bassoon has helped you or has it affected your work in the orchestra? It's made it very comfortable. We just know each other. We know how each other play. We know when 
one breeze, that's how they're going to come in. And it, we, we just are so comfortable playing with each other. And we don't have to look at each other, we listen. You know, it comes back to that listening. Um, but it's just the familiarity with each other and trusting each other as players. It's, you know, I'm curious. I think some of our listeners might find it interesting when they see musicians in a particular section switch off with other instruments, where you might switch off with bass clarinet or with E flat clarinet um, or with A clarinet on the stand. And I'm just curious, do you find it difficult to switch back and forth between these instruments? Not anymore. But when I was younger, of course, you know, you had to practice those transitions. And, you know, anybody that plays in the Broadway pits has to practice those changes that, you know, sometimes it's where do you go to get that instrument if you have several doubles. But, um, you know, you just remember what instrument you have in your hands and what embouchure you need to form. If it's an E flat clarinet, you've got to be a little bit tighter and smaller. But if it's bass clarinet, you have to open up more and put a little bit more air through the instrument. So you get to a point that it's, it's very natural and you just know how to make those changes happen. Hmm. I know at Crane you teach, uh, you've had quite a few students who've been bass clarinet students as well as, uh, e, as, well as B flat clarinet students uh, or A, but I'm just curious, do you find in teaching those two, I think people might be curious, do, do you find it's difficult to teach between these two? Are there differences with it or do you see them similarly? I see them very similarly. We ask our bass clarinet players to play at the same level as our B flat players and they have to pass the same barriers, they have to achieve the same standards. And it's maybe a little more difficult, it's a bigger instrument. And in high school, maybe they aren't challenged as much in ensemble playing or solo playing as they are when they get to college. But they very quickly catch up if they haven't been. Well, I have to say, I, I have always been amazed that all of your students have such a wonderful sound and there, there's a certain homogeneity of sound throughout the studio. Not that each person is an individual, but they always have a wonderful sound. And the bass clarinetists that I've heard so many times that you've taught are, are just wonderful players and, and they get such great training. Um, I'm just curious with the years that you've spent in the uh, Orchestra of Northern New York, um, are there any particular memories or concerts that, that uh, strike you? Well, I, I would say recently the Harry Potter concert was so much fun, you know, seeing all of the, the students and, and, and community members dressed up, you know, they were so excited about that program. Being a long fan of the films, I really enjoyed playing the music. Um, looking back a little further, I really loved the Dances of Galanta and Beethoven 4 concert we did. That was quite a challenging program for the clarinet, you know, playing principal on both of those pieces. But just a delight to finally get to play those, those excerpts we practiced for so long to get to actually play them in context in the orchestra. Do you find orchestrally, and uh, I always try to avoid this question for musicians, but I'm curious, in an orchestral sense, do you find there are certain composers that you particularly gravitate to, that you love playing? Sure. Um, one of my favorites, and I haven't had the opportunity to play it much in the orchestra, is Prokofiev. Mm -hmm. um, I look back to my dance days. I was fortunate enough to dance in both Romeo and Juliet and Cinderella as a, an apprentice with the company at home. And I just, from the first note of the Cinderella score, I fell in love with his music. And I was in high school, I went to the public library, and at that time, you know, checked out every CD of Prokofiev I could find, and spent the next several weeks listening to every piece he had. And I'm I, just a huge fan. It's, it's a, it's, he's one of my favorite composers. His writing is so, so amazingly difficult for the strings. I mean, even um, orchestras that are full-time, 52-week orchestras, struggle with these, these scores in, in terms of the strings. Um, I'm just curious, um, with, you wear so many different hats, and not only with Northern Symphonic Winds and the Orchestra of Northern New York and the Reed Trio and all your teaching, but you also have a very active family life. And I'm curious, do you find it difficult to balance all these things as you're trying to make it all work? It's certainly a balance. Um, my husband and I, my husband's very supportive. He's also a full-time teacher and director of bands at Crane, and um, we have quite a schedule. <laughs> and, you know, we, we balance it out. You know, I, I, ha I keep a, a family calendar, and we, we make sure that we're not overlapping anything. We have my daughter in some extracurriculars, and um, we make it work. And it's just you have to balance everything you're doing and, and not um, get overwhelmed. It's what's the next task? Okay, we go to that one. It's not thinking about 10 tasks down the road. I, I want to say to our listeners that um, uh, in a future time, we're going to have um, several members who have been 
of the orchestra or past members of the orchestra who have been directors of Crane Youth Music. And Julianne is currently uh, the director of the Crane Youth Music. And in the very beginning of our segment, I meant to mention that right off, but we're going to have her come back and talk about it. But just, I'm just curious to give us a bit of a teaser. What do you think has been the greatest um, part of the collaboration between Crane Youth Music and the Orchestra of Northern New York? Well, it's the students always get to come and see concerts, you know, get to see the 4th of July um, concert during camp. And it's a great way to, to celebrate, obviously, the holiday. Um, but they have the opportunity to work with the musicians in the orchestra. And then they come to the concert and they see those musicians performing as part of the orchestra. And I think that's really exciting. And, and they realize, oh, I could, I could do that. I That's could great. play in that orchestra or, or an orchestra someday. Yeah. Or one of those pieces. Or one of those pieces. Those and pieces. sometimes they have the opportunity to play a piece that Ani is playing. Yeah. And that's been exciting, too. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to the, another segment when we have several of you who mm -hmm. either are the, are the current director of uh, Crane Youth Music or past directors of Crane Youth Music. And uh, this has been such an amazing uh, camp for students, not only in our region, but beyond our region uh, as well. But we'll do that another time when we have a little bit more time. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And I want to thank our listeners for joining us today. And watch ahead next week as we put another segment of Tuesday Talks with the Maestro on our website, ani.org. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy.